OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. It is, this is one of the thing, one of the um, presentations I love most to present because I love CK12 and I want to share it with you. My name is Debbie Jensen. I was an adult basic skills instructor at Baldwin Park Adult and Community for over 30 years. Today, I focus my time working for OTAN. I'm a CK12 certified instructor, and I'm happy to be here and share with you the future of digital education, which is CK12. They are interactive digital textbooks, and they're free. My co-presenter is Katie Hammond. She's from CK12 and she will demonstrate CK12 to us. She knows everything there is to know about CK12 and will help us with any questions you have. I hope you have many questions. I've got my chat open so that I can see it. It's right on top of my screen. So if you have a question, we want to answer it as we go so that you have an opportunity to learn. I truly believe that this is something that helps adult education and will be a blessing to our students. In the time we have together, let's answer what is CK12. Let's explore what it can do for you. Look at the new adult education website at CK12 and its resources. We'll look at them as an educator and then we'll also look at them and see what the student has um, available to him. And then a little bit about my own experience and then we're going to go live. Um, I want to show you just how user friendly CK12 is. And so we want to spend time with that. Okay, now I'm going to turn the time over to Katie so she can tell you all things CK12. Sounds good. Thank you, Debbie. So for many of you, this may be your first introduction to CK12, um, but we've been a premier flexible learning solution since 2007. And we've served over 200 million users from around the world. Um, we really believe that every student has a unique personalized learning journey, and we try to offer multiple pathways for students to learn in their own way. We're a nonprofit organization, and all of the resources that you find on CK12 are free for you to use. All textbooks, interactives, all of that is 100% free. So you're not going to see advertising on our site. You're not going to hit a paywall to access our Flexbooks. It's really a chance for you to go ahead and explore and take those to the next level and share them with your students. Um, and so that access is free for teachers and students, and it's going to give you the tools and resources that you need in any setting. Now, we are used across the world. You can check our usage map at the bottom and see just kind of the breadth of places that were used by teachers, students, districts, because not only is it free, but it's really the best content. When you're using a CK12 resource, you can trust that our core content, we do have user created content that is, you know, has varying levels and content and options, but our core CK12 content um, is of the highest quality. It's been developed by over 100 PhDs, professors, teachers, authors, NASA scientists, and other subject matter and domain experts um, since we started over a decade ago. And then another major point is that we try to make that content accessible. So we've worked hard to make that content available on every platform. You don't need a particular device, any you know, tablet, laptop, Chromebook, all the rest is totally fine. Um, and available in print and digital format. So you can download our books if you need a customized version or you need a text copy or um, some of our practice questions as well. Now the best experience is live because you get all that interactivity piece, but there are available options for offline as well. Thank you. So. What is CK12? Let me first ask you a question. What do you want most as a teacher? And the answer when I was in the classroom was I wanted to try and meet the needs of each student. But traditionally, we've had to be satisfied with the needs of the majority, knowing that some of the needy students are slipping through the cracks. Enter technology. Today, with the help of technology, we can individualize our assignments and offer them in more than one modality. Now think better still. Now CK12 offers their Flexbook 2.0, customizable digital textbooks that have interactive content, including adaptive practice, simulations, interactive study guides. Now on this slide, you can see that CK12 has also offered an assistant for every teacher in the classroom. 
And we will be looking at this, but what it means is that they offer insights into what the student's doing, what the student doesn't understand. And that saves you a lot of time. As part of their assistance, CK-12 will organize your students into a digital classroom and assess, and then you can access an intelligent gradebook that easily displays what the students are doing and reveals patterns then you can spend your time addressing the problems that have been revealed. As CK-12, they recognize, and I'm quoting, all people everywhere learn in their own way. Technology at its best should assist the learning. So CK-12 has accepted that challenge. They join technology and quality content. Then they equip students and teachers with everything they need to access the resources and assess the students' learning. To top it all off, they've created a platform for you to take their existing content and modify it or add to it. You can even start from scratch with a blank Flexbook 2.0 and create your own resources. So what it means is you have a smart 21st century Flexbook 2.0 that can include videos, interactive simulations, assistive practice that assesses student progress, guides their learning, making their problems or questions more difficult or less difficult depending on the student. If the student's struggling, they'll make suggestions to the studio, excuse me, they'll make suggestions to the student about other media such as videos or real world applications that might work. And to the teacher, they'll let you know what they're struggling with and what they don't understand. Now, Katie's gonna go live right now because I'm so excited about these lessons, but you've got to see one. You've got to see one to know what we're talking about. So let me stop sharing and let, we'll let Katie show you an example of one of our Flexbook lessons. Thanks, Debbie. I'm going to kind of start at the adult ed page. You can find that under subjects and kind of pick any of your adult ed options from our homepage. Those are actually don't show up on the adult ed page because you're already there, but they do show up if you click subjects elsewhere. Um, so if we're on our main page, I can go to subjects. And then I can kind of jump to our adult education page. So let's get to basic education here. And from here, I'm just going to open the first flexbook that's there. So let's let's look at our first options and you'll notice that across the ck12 platform depending on when the resource was made or who created it or what happened you're gonna have different resources and opportunities and levels of interactivity and all the rest um, so just be aware that that's based on kind of a number of different factors um, so i want to kind of stick to the adult ed ones to start to give you a sense of what's available in those and across those so our math and science ck12 is core math and science. So these books were taken from our core content. They were then customized and aligned with the ideas of kind of the topics that adult learners would need for this particular piece. And you can see here that there's a number of different authors from OTAN to, you know, another couple of adult educators. Debbie worked on this book at one point in time. So her name's on there as well. Um, but if I go ahead and I just pick a chapter and I expand this chapter and then I pick a lesson within it, it's going to drop you into the lesson. And this lesson has a couple of different components. So you're gonna see core text. You see kind of your title, your core text, what's happening. This one gives you an opening scenario. A lot of our things really try to start with something that relates to real life and hooks kind of students into that piece. You'll see text options in math. You might see example problems or in this case, place value charts, um, different parts there. You'll see embedded videos or an embedded interactivity within our lessons um, across our content areas all sorts of different pieces here. And as you keep going down, you can even see sometimes questions directly within here, or as you can see on the bottom right here, a digital quiz. So this quiz opens up. These quizzes were curated to go with this piece. You as a teacher can preview this quiz, but a student would get dropped directly into that quiz. And we can talk a bit more about our practice and our quizzes as we go through kind of in a later piece, but I want you to be aware that that is tied directly to this lesson. So those questions match this content. You can assign this if you're using the assign option at the top that all kind of ties in together and works with it as it is. Now within the lesson, there are a couple other pieces. So one, you'll see this little guy on our bottom left, our little student tutor option. So our student tutor in a math thing just has a task that might say for a student, hey, you have an assignment coming up for a teacher, students have finished work, you can see insights. 
If we go over to science one, we'll see some other options as well that are being kind of expanded where you can actually ask our student tutor questions or our teacher assistant questions about the platform or about different pieces. But keep in mind that that's available there, um, definitely to keep you on track and your students on track, as well as to ask questions. And that opportunity to ask is gonna be expanded across our platform as we go. Within our toolbar up at the top, let's see, we have something where we talk about near the top, we talk about place value. So a decimal is a part of a whole. I'm gonna highlight that. We have annotation tools available within here. And then I can find as a user, whether I'm a student or a teacher, I can find all of my notes and highlights here. So I can then use that as a reference. We'll have teachers that will encourage students to highlight all vocabulary in one color and all key topics in another, and all formulas in another. Um, and that way they have a really quick little review option when they wanna go back to that particular lesson. So you have some other options in here as well, but kind of the one that we're highlighting right now is that notes and highlights option. We mentioned that there's attached practice for this lesson. And at the very bottom of the lesson, I also want you to be aware that we have built in a Google Translate option. So if your students are speaking another language as their home language, their primary language, then you can go ahead and it will convert all of the core text into, in this case, I pick Spanish. And that might be useful for a student to go ahead and work from there um, and get a chance to say, okay, well, what was this? Okay, that's what that said. And now I'm gonna go back to English and try to learn kind of the English vocabulary that I'm gonna need for some of that practice, those quiz questions that are attached. But that opportunity to actually convert that content into another language for English language learners can be really, really important as you go through. So that's one, let's just so you can see for a second, a chance to understand kind of what else might be um, a little bit different. So in high school equivalency, let's pick our science option. There's a couple science options down here at the bottom. So let's give you a sense of how those might be slightly different than math. Um, and you'll see here, same deal, you got kind of your overall piece. We have our chapter options here. In this case, let's pick another chapter, another section. So we go in here one on photosynthesis. And you'll see here a similar setup with attached questions with our little tutor slash assistant in the bottom left corner. If I actually click on it, maybe it'll load um, and you'll be good to go from there. So again, we're starting with some sort of scenario in science. It's usually an open question for our core content. And then you can scroll down. And in this case, there's built in questions. There's a built in video in this place. You might even see built in interactivity depending on when the content was pulled. Um, we'll show you some more of that as well. It's just going to keep loading while I'm talking. And then same deal, the quiz right here, your summary and answers. If I did notes and highlights, I could access those in my toolbar in the top right as well. Um, and then while that loads, I'm going to go ahead and click on here. And you'll see that our tutor slash assistant in the bottom left has one other option. So you can see here that we are beta testing this out. So this is a newer feature. Um, and you can say, Let's see, what, why isn't Pluto a planet? And ask a question. So it could be a science question. In this case, we're working off of our science as our starting piece. Or you could do something as an educator and say, how do I customize content on CK12? And that's gonna pull up information to help you kind of do that piece. And you can get a link to a help desk article or a video. So all of that is built into our core lesson as opportunities to work with. And that little Q&A piece is being tested in our science content right now, and we'll expand out from there. Um, and so that kind of core piece with text and videos or other interactives that you'll see in different places is based on the fact that we started as a core math and science content. And you will see other resources for other subject areas on the OTAN page and across our platform. Um, and those may have different levels of interactivity based on who created them and where they're coming from. Um, but hopefully that's a quick overview of what that lesson looks like. Debbie, is there anything else you want me to cover right now or should we save the rest of it for later on? Let's save it. I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I'll continue. Let's see. This was not okay. Yes. All right. And then we will go back to screen two. And we'll continue with the slideshow. Okay, I'm going to share some of the things she said, because I just fell in love with this more and more as I went through. Um, this is the lesson that she showed, that an example of a lesson that she showed. 
And on it, you'll see at one, something that we're gonna talk about a little bit later, but this is where the class insights are, where you find all about the class and how the class is doing, which students are struggling. At two, that was the highlighting. Now, as an ABE teacher, having a textbook help me teach the students how to critically read would be really powerful. Having to, them to be able to uh, highlight the main idea or um, topic sentences or whatever, that's cool. And that they can gather all their notes in one place. Very, very nice. So that they, no matter where they are, they can be taking notes on their text. At the bottom, you see the view, the quiz. And these quiz, quizzes are all um, connected with the lesson. And they can be expanded. I don't even know how many questions CK12 has developed over all of these topics. And you have access to those. So if you think the quiz needs a little bit more, you can look at all the questions they've already created. Or you can create your own questions, maybe ones that um, you've gone over in class and you want to be sure that are in those quizzes. And so you can customize those quizzes to fit your students' needs. At four, we have the student helper, and she showed you him. He's great. Um, so let me move to the next slide. Okay, on this one, I'm looking at a little bit more about some of the study features. Um, if you open up the taking notes at number one, the, um, you will then open it up and you see it at two and you see where you can actually take the notes and write them right there on your screen. You can also, um, they'll show you where it goes. It goes over on the third um, place. And I also like on the left where you can see the basics of real numbers, which is actually a study guide. Now, I never really thought study guides were going to be all that great. And whoa, this is something revolutionary. But these study guides are impressive in their scope and they were written by students. And so they cover and look at it, not as the teacher, but as the student. And so they're very valuable. And I think your students and your teachers will be very pleased with what's there and available for them. If we continue scrolling down the lesson, you're going to see videos like is on the left. But then also on the right, this is a math one. And so this is if they get into the practice. Now, the practice, it's always 10 questions. And it is determined and helped out by um, CK12. If the student's getting the questions wrong, then the questions get easier and helps are offered by the assistant. Um, if, the, if the student's doing really, really well, then the questions get harder so that it's adapting um, and they call it adaptive practice and it's magnificent. Um, so at one, you see that you're on question 10, two of 10 questions. At number two, you see the level that you're at. So right now it's, it's beginning, you're just starting. Um, three is the scratch pad. Again, how better could it be than to be able to actually do the problem there in and on a scratch pad available to you? And at number four, you see the tools that can be used with the scratch pad so that this makes it so that the student can actually practice right there in the book. Now, this is recently um, CK12 is always changing. And that's, that's cool. Um, this is something that's being added, a feature that's being added right now to geometry and um, the biology classes. Um, in the lessons, they went back and they went for terminology. Like here, it says a line segment is a portion of a line with two endpoints. An array is, okay, now that's in the text, but they've added the interactive right there so that the student can understand what they're talking about with that vocabulary. Um, they assist the students understanding with the terminology and you can also customize your lessons um, with added features that you would like to put into each lesson. Maybe um, something you feel is they would really, really would help them with what they're studying. Now, let's assume that you split your screen and you've gone to CK12, okay? I suggest it. <laughs> Go to ck12.org. This is the screen you're going to see. 
And you'll see at the top arrow on the left where it says switch to teacher view. Um, if you do that, then it'll be all things teacher. OK, and so that's valuable for you to be able to do. Um, if you click on it, it's going to once you've enrolled, then you will be in the teacher version. Now, notice in the center, CK12 has included topics of interest, including adult education. Now, I circled that and put an arrow with it. March 2021, um, CK12 and OTAN partnered to put a place on CK12 for adult education teachers and students. So we have our own web page. And we are excited because it's growing. OK, so we're continuing on that first page. Now, this is me coming in the second time. The first time it looked like the other screen. This is the second time I came in. I was looking for math. And so what you're going to see is at the center of the screen, these were things that were recently viewed or things that they recommend. So they're helping me right from the start in my search of trying to find materials. Um, I can click on recommended by subjects. I can click by standards. Um, I can also use the concept map um, as ways to uh, filter my search. Now, along the top, you've got the dashboard. You've got classes, and we'll look at that. You've also got your library. This one's really important, and you may not know it at first, because anytime you see something or find something that you think, oh, that's really cool, or maybe not for you. Maybe it's for the teacher next door, but it's really cool and you don't want to lose it. Add it to your library. Your library is your repository of great stuff. Uh, you may work on it today. You may work on it in several months, but it's saved for you. It's kind of like booking, bookmarking the things that you want. The next part is subjects. We're going to look at that. Um, so that you can look at a general section that kind of gives you an overview of all subjects. And then there's explore. The last one is what you want to learn. And this is um, the search bar. And so you can type in what you're wanting to learn there as well. This is the subjects. Um, and you can see that the first digital efforts that CK12 made were in the STEM courses. And so you had science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. They've branched out now to include courses that are made by community partners um, as well. And so you have more than just their core courses. Um, and you see that I circled the adult education because I wanted you to just know how proud we are that it's there. And just this week, career technical ed and English as a second language were added. So we're continuing just looking at all of the different things. And Katie's going to look at these because there's no way that just looking at this slide is going to give you an idea of how cool simulations are. But I just wanted you to see the, the breadth that they have of things that you can use. Um, you may not want a whole text, but how about that beginning activity? Or how about that ending activity? Or uh, something to assist in your students' understanding. Um, the ones that you see on the screen are all, these are physics. There's also chemistry simulations. Um, but we have a driverless car or scientific measurement done at the crossroads or motion and position under Irwin and Rudy. And those are little robots. Um, you also have model rockets. And through that, you learn about motion and acceleration or telescopes and how they work with concave mirrors or convex mirrors or the prom night and mirrors trying to reflect how well you look and how that whole process works. So lots that is here. You can spend a lot of time. And the good news is that whenever you find something you like, just put it in your library. Now, again, we've got Plex. They call these play, learn, interact, and explore. Math and science all types of math and science. Uh, things uh, arithmetic, measurement, algebra, geometry, probability, statistics, trigonometry. Uh, in the sciences, we've got life science, earth science, physical science, biology, chemistry, physics, just all sorts of things. Um, and so you can filter them by different topics that you may be teaching, but also they just help with 
you know, like metric. You may not think you're doing math, but if you're having to use metric in any way, that would be helpful for students to learn about it um, and how it's done. So just lots of things that are here and available. Um, Here's an example of a Plix activity. Now this is, they have elaborate ones. This one was simple for me. I'm an ABE teacher. I teach basic math. And my students struggle with the ideas of parallel and um, intersecting perpendicular, this vocabulary. And in this, you drag the points on the line from one house to another. And then the line you've created, they ask you, is it parallel? Very simple idea, but something that allows them when they are on their own to practice a concept. Um, how many times do you realize your students aren't getting the vocabulary? You're using it. You, you think they get it, but then you realize it's going over their head. And especially in your math and things like that, that becomes challenging. I wanted to share another section under explore on the menu bar on the homepage. And it's the teacher testimonials. There are hundreds and I spent time and listened to all of them and they are inspiring. Um, to get to know CK better, I wanted to see what people were saying. These are teachers and administrators who have discovered valuable truths. For example, the director of the Coeur d'Alene School District wanted his students to investigate and experience lessons to be able to go at their own pace and design their own learning. Using CK-12, that was possible. Another teacher wanted to be able to tailor their own flex books. We have something historical that happens. What's happening right now in the world? That's not in any textbook, but it can be in your flex book because you can add it on the weekend and it'll be there on Monday never out of date. And local, what's happening locally, you can put those things in your textbook. Exciting and not hard. Um, one teacher learned that she loved her flex book year by year because she found that the students discovered how to learn, how to find their own answers through the books and through the learning and the things that they could, they could um, explore. Um, one teacher wanted to um, expand the student's learning and was able to do that. And she got so excited because she was used to taking home one of those little rolly carts with all of the books and the things that she needed every day. She just put it all in her flex book. One book, one place. The students have everything they need. And she was excited too. Now, just two more. One teacher talked about this, a student coming to her and saying, teacher, I couldn't do it. Um, I didn't have a computer at home. And a student beside him said, dude, use your phone. That's, that's impressive, <laughs> exciting. They can use their phones to access all of these things. Um, and then the last one, and this is one that I know will touch your hearts as it is mine. A parent came in and said they wanted to help their student with it, but they were so sorry, they did not read English well. And so the teacher was able to show how the textbooks can be changed into other languages. And for us, with so many um, languages that are reflected in our classes, sometimes five or six different languages in our classes, how valuable is this, that you can have books that can meet their needs? We have a question. Can the courses be broken down into individual credits instead of a full semester? Many of our adult ed students come in with partial credits. The credits are going to be up for you, what you plan on doing with it, but the flex books can be broken up any way you want. If you've got a flex book that's got 12 units, cut it up. Have one. Have another. And the value of that is you can assign individual students to individual books. Um, and, and lessons, and you can tailor the lessons. Maybe you have a basic that has ones that you've pulled in. Um, 
you can use all sources that are at K, uh, CK12. They have one of the things that I did was I wanted to make sure that ABE students struggle because they don't read at an eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th reading grade. We are, they were often at four. And so I went to CK12, I went to their science lessons, which are talking about earthquakes or, um, oh, just basic things like planets that the students, they're interested in, but it's written at a fourth grade reading level. And so then that reading material is available to my student and you can do that. Um, you can divide up your textbooks to reflect what your students need. And, and you're right, it is, it's, it's magnificent. Um, I get more excited every time. Okay, here's the site. This changed last month. Now it was fabulous last year. I was all excited, wanted a drum so I could do a drum roll because we had our site. Now it reflects us even more. And so go here, definitely pay attention to the videos that are here. This is us. CK12 was designed for um, kindergarten through 12th grade, a lot of college stuff. I mean, there's lots, I love it, but this is us. And this is, so it reflects our needs and what we're doing. Um, as you see, we have an adult basic education section. Let me tell you how this was organized. The reason I know is I had a hand in it. They said, okay, what's being used for adult education in basic skills? And so I went and I turned to see what I was using. And that's what I gathered here. You'll see that there was a lot of math. Math depends on how you want to teach it, how you want to order it. And that can all be done. Find one of the books you like. If it's not perfect, that's okay. Take out what you don't like, go to another book, find things you do like, and add them in. Create your own. And then at the end, you see the ABE Basic Science Reading Part 1. Um, and your question, are more books being developed for adult Ed, I am so glad you asked. The answer is yes. And the challenge is to you and to all of us. Your work can be put here too, so that we can grow this to reflect the needs that we as adult educators have. This is our high school diploma. And it's pretty decent. I mean, you could pretty much run your program. You've got high school US history, you've got government, you've got economics, biology, chemistry, physics, pre-algebra and algebra one, okay? Now, these are the ones that we thought would be useful and appropriate. Don't ever forget to go back and check the CK-12 for everything that's available. Maybe you're teaching earth sciences. Well, they've got a great textbook on our sciences. So use that too. Yes, I will show you what we do have at ESL. Our ESL section, we are very proud of. Let me get to it. All right, so this is the high school equivalency. Um, and if you have taught GED or not have any recollection of those courses, they are um, foundational math, algebra basics, geometry, data, statistics, and probability, algebra, mathematics companion, science for high school. And this is growing. We have a teacher that is working on it and she's almost ready to add hers. So this is that you can do this. Some of these you'll see and you'll go, oh, that that's just great. Then that's the one that you start with and add from there. The link to it, yes. We will get that link into you. Okay, these were added mm, three weeks ago. All right, under the CTE, we have career and technical education topics, anatomy and physiology, health science, and cosmetology. Again, there's so much out there. The way the first one happened was in my own district. I was trying to convince my CTE teachers that CK-12 has things for them. And so I went through and I got materials for our automotive services, our cosmetology and barbering, our culinary arts, our electrician and heating, and health science and medical technology. And so those were just a lesson or two on each of those to let them know, yes, there's great stuff here. Look and see what you can find. 
And then the last one, this is our ESL. Uh, we have the beginnings. We're so excited. But we need you, the lessons that you create and that we can add here. They have a platform that makes creation easy. You can add videos, you can add text, you can add images. And then they have a repository of questions that's huge, but you can also add your own questions and create your own quizzes. And this is all here. So when I was trying to find things for ESL, I went all the way down because I wanted to see what CK12 had. And they had, of course, kindergarten and first grade. So I thought, well, are they going to be bouncing bunnies and things like that? And I found one that is a poem. It's, well, I don't know if it's a poem. It's about shadows. And it's beautiful. And of course, it's written at that low reading level. And it was totally usable right now for a teacher in adult ed. I wanted to, I didn't want to get past this. One of our teachers who's working on the um, uh, high school equivalency courses knew that you start with a CK-12 Flexbook and, and you kind of might not know what to do with it. So she created a series of videos. The videos included, um, let's see, what were they? Uh, inter learning uh, an introduction to CK-12, learning through reading, highlighting and taking notes, changing the language, how to use clicks and interactives, and online practice. These are great little videos. Now here's, here's the kicker. You can put these videos in yours, in every one of yours. You can take her introduction and you can put that in each of your textbooks if you think that will help your students. And that's the thing that's so cool. It's like you have a smorgasbord and you get to take whatever works to make yours the best. Okay, we've talked a bit about Flexbooks and how powerful they are and that they're all customizable. We've talked about the adaptive practice, the simulations and the plexes. These are all here and they're active links so that as you're at the adult ed site, you can go to learn more about each of these things and find the resources that you're interested in. That doesn't, the, the ease of use does not end there. You can integrate your CK-12 with three of the most popular learning management systems. On this slide, you'll, you see Google Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology full integration with CK-12. And you can see the students' grades show in your gradebook. So that's cool. Now let's see, I see a question. Oh, okay, we got that one. Okay, if you use CK-12 with an integrated LMS, they don't need a separate CK-12 login. Yes, this is Katie's answer and it is true. It's just right there for the student, it's simple. And it just becomes part. I used mine with my Google Classroom. And it put the lessons right in to my Google Classroom. And the grades then just went right into the gradebook. Very cool. All right. These are testimonials from us. You've got to listen. They're super great. We have students, administrators, and our very own Netta Anasari talking about the power of these textbooks as they've been used in adult education classrooms. We're still going down that adult education page. So we're just scrolling down through it and I'm just pointing out what's there. They're showing you that they have a YouTube channel. And here are three that you might need. Okay, finding flexbooks, insights for those flexbooks, how to use them and what they really can do for you and how to assign them to your class. But don't forget that you've still got the YouTube channel, which has many, many more um, videos that you can use. Okay, the next thing that you'll hit is a question that they're asking you. Are you an educator or are you a student? Now we're gonna be an educator first and show you what they offer because what you're going to see when I first looked at CK-12, it was kind of overwhelming. It's kind of like being in a huge library and you're just going, whoa, where do I start? How do I find things? What do I do? They have helps everywhere. They want you to succeed. Okay, so the first thing they talk about is the teacher assistant. And here's what it's gonna look like. Okay, we are seeing um, 
outcomes. And so we've got time on task, we've got the skill level, the engagement, and the time that they've used on the lessons. Um, and you can get that those insights for the whole class. You can also get it for individual students. Then one step even higher is they give you recommendations. Sometimes I look at these charts because I've gone to some of the online places and I've been thrilled with the information, but I didn't know what to do with it. They'll say, three students in your class are doing exceptionally well. You may assign them the next concept or students with the low skill level seems to be struggling with prerequisite concepts. We recommend angles and lines and polygons and the links right there so that you don't even have to go back and say, well, I don't know where that is. It's right there so that you can get it. This is their heat map and it shows you at a glance what people are struggling with. And we see that um, Theodore is having troubles with two-step equations. He's way down there at 20% and needs more help there. Now, this is something they've just recently added because when you have troubles and you ask CK12 questions, and I suggest you do that, they will respond and a lot of them will go to Katie. <laughs> so she will be able to help you. But they take and they see what people are asking questions about and then they address it. And they realize that some people weren't sure about those heat maps or how to use those scores and those skill levels. And so they actually put in this so that, that those questions are answered. And if you click on the question mark, this is what you're going to get. They tell you exactly how to read the chart and what the modalities mean. Well, what's the difference between practice and quiz? Or what's a read? Or I don't understand RWA, that's the real world applications. And they'll tell you the goal of that modality and what the scores mean. So you, they're doing all the work, which is very nice because as a teacher, you really want to address the students' needs. Now, they continue on. And the next question is, are you new to remote learning? Now, a couple of years back, we would all have said yes. Now we might feel like we're pros, but maybe we don't feel like pros. Maybe we could use some more help. So they're going to guide you in creating and connecting a class to the um, different ways that you can have an LMS, whether it's CK12, because they will do it for you. Let's say you don't have any of those. Well, that's okay. You'll create a class there at CK12 and they will be your LMS. They will help you with all of things grading and recording and finding things. But how do you find that Flexbook to start with? Now, just a little note and I'll put it here, but it's a funny aside. When I was looking for cosmetology, if I typed in cosmetology, I didn't get what I thought of as cosmetology. CK12 wasn't anticipating my question. So I went to Google and I wrote cosmetology colon CK12 and they found all the lessons for me. So don't forget Google, it's always useful. All right, and then they also teach you how to assign to the students. Taking a deeper dive, strategies for how to use these books, flexlets, I fell in love with these. Remember how over one day, we went from in-class, in-person to online, and we had to finish that quarter out online. I was worried that my students would fall behind, and that's what the Flexlets were developed for. They are summaries for math and science of things that the students, the skills that they might lose um, or might have lost. And for a lot of our adults, they're the same skills. So definitely take check out the flexlets. They're cool. Um, how to customize. We won't have time to talk to you about how to, but we'd love to. Contact. If there is a group of you or a, a school that want to work on customizing flexbooks for your school, OTAN's right there for you. We would love to come in. Last year, we created a series of um, webinars on that very topic, taking you step by step how to customize your books to do what you wanted them to, them to do. And then also getting started with Canvas and Schoology. Um, they don't go into Google Classroom here because now this is my opinion and Katie will correct me. Google Classroom is really simple. You don't need your district's involvement. 
unless you have a district required Google account, but that's for your Google Classroom. Attaching the lessons from here, CK12, to your Google Classroom, I never needed help. I just clicked on the buttons that they guided me through. Now with Canvas and Schoology, it's a little more tricky because the district's involved, but they walk you through that as well. So you can get that too. All right. Um, maybe you don't want that textbook. Maybe, maybe you just want something to make your classroom better. And so here's links to them. More resources, all just adaptive practice on topics. So you can pull out adaptive practice that you could just use to, to uh, see where your students are. Maybe start your class with that so you can kind of see what they're struggling with or simulations and clicks. Now, let's go back. Now we're going to be a student. And when I asked my grandson about this little character, he said it looked like an orange chiclet, you know, those little gums. And I, I kind of thought that was cute. But the student assistant is impressive in all the things that he helps you with. He's at the lower left of the lesson screens. Screen, screen sorry. Um, he provides immediate feedback to help the students learn the concepts. He answers students' questions, provides interactive examples. He tests students' learning by asking them questions at their skill level and helps with assignments by offering hints and recommendations and reinforcement. Even more, the tutor provides reminders of upcoming assignments or topics that need reviewing or of unfinished student work. He's a personal tutor for each student. He can help them stay on track. And he even asks self-reflection questions about how you're doing and how can you improve. Pretty cool. OK, this was my journey. I wanted math, basic math. And so I went to the subjects and looked there. And that's where I found a book to begin with. OK, and then I was able to zero into a book. Um, you can use the subjects to explore. You can use explore. You can also use the search box. Um, all of those are good ways to get started in searching for what you're looking for. OK, now, once I, you found your resource, you can do some things with it to individualize it. I wasn't into rewriting a math lesson. I, that idea was way over my head. I, I, that was before. But I found this one, and I thought this was going to be great for me. So what can I do now? Well, if you're using a CK-12 book, it's not going to say high school equivalency. So give it a title. You can do that. Um, you can um, change things to, to meet your needs and what you want. Um, maybe change the name to something simple that reflects your school. But OK, on this screen, on that green button that says choose, when you click on the little arrow beside it, you can see that you can assign it right now. You can add it to your library so that if you're looking for later and you're just gathering and putting the stuff in your cart, that's what that is. You can customize it. You can add it to a Flexbook 2.0 that you're already creating. And this is where I told you, you know, if you want to take just one lesson from one book and add it to yours, this is the one you'd pick. You would then, they give you the list of the book you're creating and then they just add it. Um, you can share it with your class and you can also download it as a PDF. Sometimes in our rural areas or in our areas where internet is difficult or with just some of our students and the needs that they have, this is very valuable to be able to do. But at the least, give it a name and change the image. The first book I did, I changed the image to a picture of Baldwin Park Adult School. And you can give the name something as simple as uh, Mrs. Jensen's math book, math course, you know, to, so personalize it. Now, editing lessons. This, a couple of things. First of all, on that screen where you see the one introduction and the two integers, those are chapters. And sometimes people get confused with thinking those are lessons. Chapters, what you're gonna do with a chapter is you can change its name, you can delete it, you can move it, you can check things like um, oh, adding materials to it in as a teacher, like resources for your addendum to it, um, the name of the people that wrote it, that kind of stuff, okay? The thing that you're after is the lessons. 
And so you click the little arrow to the left and you can see the arrow that is pointing to it on the left. You click that and that opens up the lessons. Okay, now, so the lessons are 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, those are your lessons. And that's where you're going to want to do your editing. Um, so if we look at those and we go over to the right where you can see the second arrow and they're the snowman, um, these are things you can do. You can update it. You can preview the update. You can edit it. You can rename the lesson. You can move it or you can remove it completely, delete it. So those are the things that you're going to be able to do. And at the beginning level, that's just going in and saying, yeah, I like that lesson. No, I don't like that lesson. I would, I teach that lesson second and that kind of stuff. And so simple things. All right. When you're all done, be sure to hit save. <laughs> I cannot tell you. I'm just telling you the things I did wrong. <laughs> you go through, you move it around, you get it all the way you want to, and then you think you're done and you save it. And there it is. So, but just doing what we did maybe deleting a couple lessons that you say no i'm not teaching that this quarter maybe next quarter and you take those out you can do this in five minutes just change the name to what you want it to be if you don't want to change the image that's fine delete rearrange five minutes you've got it all ready for yourself now here's a navigation tip that i learned later but would, would have been very valuable when I was doing the course, I would go all the way back. I'd either use my back button or I'd go all the way back to the dashboard and then click back through and find where I was working in the whole thing. Well, you don't need to do that. Over here, if you click beside your profile, you can access dashboard, my classes, my library and settings right there. And so that, that can save you a few clicks. So use that. We talked about creating a class. Okay, now when you create a class, but well, you don't even have to. First of all, if you find a lesson that you want to use on Monday, just share the link. The links are unique. And so highlight it, paste it into an email to your students or your Google Classroom or however, maybe Remind, maybe you're using Remind. They've got the lesson right there. So that's as simple as it can be. If you want to have the uh, CK12 help you with the grading and all of that kind of stuff and, and scoring and what the students are doing, whether they completed it or they didn't complete it, create a class. Uh, you can create it on CK12 and assign it right there. Um, CK12 assists with the record keeping and the evaluating process. Um, you can see on this screen under home the kinds of things they give you help with. Assignments, reports, Q&A, shared resources, members, settings, all of these things right here for you to be able to use. They've also listed the assignments that I gave to that class. Or you can use an LMS. And the ones that they have available that work easily are the Google Classroom, the Canvas, and the Schoology. Um, looking through my experience, this was how simple it was. I picked out the lesson. I, at one, clicked to connect to my Google Classroom. At two, I selected the correct Google Classroom because I have several Google uh, accounts and I had to pick out the correct one that had that classroom attached to it. So you pick the correct Google account. Then you get a button that says, okay. So they've done it. So then you run over to your Google Classroom and there it is. As a teacher, I can see that the overview of percents is right there. They have put it in. Now I can then move it down to where I want it to be so that if it's in a specific lesson, I can put it in that lesson. But this is how the students see it. It has that CK12 logo right there in front of the lesson. And so they're able to do it right within Classroom. And this is the great part. Look at that. The grades right there. And so I can know whether they finished the assignment or not. Now, I got all excited about what students have to help them. I also got all excited about what you get as help for you as a teacher. 
but you don't have a class. So how are you going to see all those cool things? So CK12 responded and made a demo class. So when you go up to the top of the screen and it says class insights and there's a little um, lightning bolt, if you click on try demo class, they've created a class to be able to show you all of these things that are available to you once you have your class. Um, you can see class overview, the level of engagement, the skill levels, performance, low and high, if they have turned it in or haven't turned in the assignment yet, and their insights and recommendations. And you can see the screen over on the right, which gives an example of one of the graphs that we already looked at. All right, before we go live, I wanted to share with you a couple of things. First is community partners. We're 10 years out. There's a lot of people that have looked at this and said, this is where we're going. There's a whole lot of money spent by districts in textbooks that are going to be obsolete very quickly. And most particularly, that's true in adult schools, because oftentimes in adult schools, we get the high school's leftovers. When they're ready to buy new ones, we get their old ones. And so money's a problem. So districts all over the United States and even the world have adopted CK-12 as their source and they have created their own books. You have that to pick from as well. So not just CK-12, but community partner uh, materials as well. Don't leave those out, they're impressive. Um, remembering that monitoring assignments and assisting the students, CK-12 is right there to help. Um, you can differentiate assignments here by student, giving them each different work. Um, the student can do it on their own as well, not just you assigning them, but they can find, and CK-12 will offer other modalities like videos. When you start with the lesson, they will have other things available as choices for the student to try as well. Um, vast numbers of resources for you to look through um, to enhance the work that you're already doing. Um, the reports and what they tell you, valuable, the quizzes and adaptive practice, being able to write your own quizzes, being able to go in and take out questions and add new ones or get other ones, very important. And the last thing I wanna add is they are writing Spanish flex books as well, so that that is a growing place as well. Now we have a question to UCK12 with Schoology, do I need to go through the district? Yes, you do. Schoology and Canvas both are through the district. So you'll you go to your district and you say, I'm using uh, CK12, and then they click a button or toggle a switch or something like that, and then it's available to you. And, and that's, that's all it requires is the district just turning it on and then it, it runs. All right. Okay. What if your textbook could? Anywhere using any device 24 seven for free, reach every struggling student, the student who gets the concept and those who struggle with it, and you can reach them all at the same time. What if you could take the best of your current lessons and add them to your online textbook so that students could have them everywhere they are? What if you could know where the students were and what they're not understanding and where they stopped in the book because they didn't understand where to go on. You'd know where they're struggling, what to address. That is what CK12 offers you and offers all our students. The adult education section is small right now, but give it a few years. Just imagine after you create the best grammar textbook or the best history of California textbook or the best DMV experience text with videos and practice, then we'll add your book to the adult ed section and it's going to grow and it will be magnificent. That's the quest. And that's what I hope that you will be able to do and want to do because it's there and it's here and it's available to everyone. Remember that if you do start working with this and you get excited, and especially if you're in administration or if you want to contact your administrator and say, hey, let's get several teachers together and let's kind of do this. Look at the money we can save. We at OTAN would be glad to come and help and, and either an in-person or 
because we do online so well, we can help you online with being able to customize your textbook and walk you through it so that you can do that. All right, let's stop right here. I'm going to stop my sharing and we are going to let Katie take over and she's going to walk you through what we've done and show you just how cool everything is. And please continue asking your questions. Katie, have you got the share? I do. I think okay. everyone can see it. So All right. you know that. Um, please don't hesitate to you know, ask questions. Debbie can check them and let me know if something comes up that I should swap out for. I did try to answer the ones that were in there. Um, but yeah, let's talk about navigating. So we did talk a little bit about kind of the main OTAN page. So if I click on subjects or I scroll down here and I click on any of the adult ed pieces, it will jump you to that page on CK12 that we've partnered with OTAN for the books that they have curated pulling content from a number of places. And those are all available here. So go ahead and check that out under subjects. It doesn't currently show up under here, but that's because the whole page is already here. So you don't need to navigate away from it. But if you're on the main page, you can get to there. You can explore any of these books as you go. But I want to give you a sense that if you want to add to those books or you want to create your own, as Debbie was talking about, or you want to do all sorts of pieces, there are a number of other resources on the broader CK12 platform that I want to make sure that you understand are available for you as well. So you can, this is the teacher side. You got your subject areas. You can explore different products. We can jump into any of these right here. Um, and the student side is just a little less cluttered. So if I swapped over to the student, same deal. They get to see kind of ask a question so they can type in some search option or they can jump straight into the books. There's a little less of the like standards alignment and pieces like that. Um, but we're gonna stick around to the teacher side right now. Once you get into the Flexbook, you're seeing you know that core lesson is the same. Um, and I can pick any other subject. So I could go explore my other books. I could see what's happening. Um, some of our newest like middle school math content, let's say for example, has even more interactivity in it than the content that OTAN pulled. Um, so you're always welcome to pull from that resource or from the CK12 content options. And so let's say you want to do something with fractions. I can go ahead and open this chapter. Oops, clicked on details. Let's try that again. Open this chapter. Open a lesson. And in this lesson, you'll see core content. You'll see embedded interactivity. You'll see example practice. and we do have practice versus a quiz attached to our core lessons. So the, a lot of the books that OTAN created, they created very specific quizzes. So there's you know 15 questions or something like that and they're fixed and they work from here. This practice adapts to student performance. So what that means is as students are being more successful, Debbie was kind of talking about that earlier where she was talking about those questions adjusting as you go through, but just note that if you see kind of view practice versus view quiz that means you're dropping into our larger practice set versus a very specific set of questions that has already been curated for you and here you can see different questions in here you might see an interactive option i can go ahead and try it out it will load that interactive within this lesson or a broader one will pop out and it says move the green circles so we can see what's happening um, and if i actually read this thing i might actually do it correctly but you can go through and see that interactive and then if a student tries to answer what we call our inline questions, they'll get, and it says you got one of four right, I can try this all over, I could get some different pieces, you might get different resources in here. And here you can see that I get feedback for ones I got wrong. We really try to support the student in their learning as they go through. So same concept in terms of core content, lessons, practice, different pieces. But as we said, there might be a little more interactivity than there is in some other places. Um, so definitely go ahead and check that out as you go through. Um, same deal here, Flexi is available in this particular one. Um, because it's math, it's just those task or notification pieces, the science ones have a broader piece. But our core content also has some other parts. So in this toolbar, where we talked about notes and highlights, for our core content, and even in some of the books, as they kind of develop further, you may see what we call our related content. So in this case, another lesson, maybe it's a supporting lesson or a more advanced lesson that's available um, for you to use as, and share with your students. Another video example that didn't maybe fit within the core lesson text, but we thought was a great example and resource to go with that. And in this case, another Plix interactive. So one of our broader interactives as we go through. Um, so that's all available there and definitely an opportunity to kind of go ahead and explore our resources and see the different interactive components in here. 
Another option is to search and you can search from here. So let's say I search for light and sound. Now, light and sound is a science topic. So I'm probably not gonna stay within this flexbook. I might wanna go ahead and search across all of CK12 and that will drop me into your broader search terms here. And this is, has a couple different functionality pieces. So you can see we have our CK12 content and then our community contributed content. So just remember that this is the content that we make sure maintains the quality that we're looking for. You are more than welcome to drop into community contributed. There's over 10,000 published flexbooks that other users have created, including the ones that OTAN has created and stuff like that on our platform. Um, but we do not double check that they said two plus two is four. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and vet those pieces. But you can explore this way or you could do this. And you could say, well, I really wanna look at that in a particular section. So I wanna look at that in let's say physical science. So can we find light and sound in physical science? And this is gonna drop you into that physical science flexbook that we have offering. And you can go ahead and it's gonna give you the search within that newer 2.0 environment. And so here you can see we have some video options, we have energy, we have mass, all sorts of choices as we go through here. Um, and so definitely just kind of keep an eye out that you may see two different versions of search, but all of them will get you different resources as you go through. So search is an option, picking a subject in a category is an option, um, and then kind of exploring our different types of resources. So even if you're not looking at the flexbooks themselves as a whole resource, uh, Debbie talked a little bit about our simulations and our clicks and our interactives. And we find that new users to CK12 that maybe have some curriculum they're working with that just wanna start testing it out, may find those interactives as a great addition to start with. So let's go ahead and look at those interactives. So if I, I found that under the explore menu, that explore menu shows up across our platform um, or anywhere you see a link to our Sims, totally fine and work from there. You'll see physics and chemistry Sims. And what's helpful is you can filter these by different concepts on CK12, or if you're looking at NGSS standards, those are available for middle and high school science. So those might be useful as kind of like a grouping narrowing mechanism. Now I taught high school math. Unfortunately, this didn't exist when I did it, but I know that there is one on a water fountain for projectile motion that I would have totally loved to use at the beginning of my classes. Um, and so these all start out with a question. We really try to kind of ground everything. How can we predict where the water is gonna land? And we can go through this scenario. We can turn our audio on and off. You know, I'm gonna turn that off so it doesn't overlay different options. It goes through that option. I can make this bigger so you all can actually see it. And then once it goes through the scenario, or if I want to skip ahead, I can drop into what we call our sandbox environment. And this allows students and teachers to kind of play around with different interactive components. Here, it might be that I'm adjusting the angle of something, the height, the speed, and then wherever that catching option is. You can turn off graphs. You know, a student doesn't have to play with that or leave it on. All sorts of options, enable last runs. So you can see kind of different, what happened last time, what happened this time, um, and really play around with the different variables to start a discussion on what this means. Now from here, you can see some different supporting resources. So students that are struggling for our physics ones, we have tutorials where you'll see someone uh, walking through the situation and then talking over it. So they're actually exploring it and verbalizing their exploration so that you can then see and understand if a student's really not think, where do I start? How do I play with this? So that might be useful. There's challenge questions for students who want to kind of think a little harder from there and move on. And then as you go through past this, so this one is really a system with a bunch of different pieces. For some of our chemistry, it's kind of like exploring and digging down to the molecular level. So it might be more like pop-up options as you go through, but your sandbox. And then for physics, there's actually some questions that you can set up. So at what velocity would the water have to travel to hit a catcher a meter away with three meters tall and angled at 25? So we have one meter away, this is three meters tall, this is angled at 25, and I can always show the question again when I forget what it is. And we go to here. And then I can kind of adjust the speed to get a sense of, okay, well, it needs to go faster or slower to make that work. And then I can submit it and see what's happening. So you'll see those for physics. 
both physics and chemistry end with three or four additional related applications. So we really try to say, this is great. This is a topic. We're good to go. But what else do we want to kind of add in here to help expand this? And this might be something that a teacher could say, we're going to go through this simulation as a startup for class. I'm going to assign it to my class and go from there. Um, I can quickly assign this if I just want to do this to CK12 class or Google Classroom. Open it up, connect to Google, pick my account. And then from there, I can assign it to any quick class. And apparently, I need to log in. And so then it will load my classes from Google or it would load my classes on CK12. You do not need both. So please don't make CK12 classes if you're also using an LMS that's integrated. But I can go ahead and assign that. Say, I want you guys to check this out. So this is a sim and explore before class tomorrow. And I can assign it. And now it's gonna show up in my Google Classroom. But I could also say after that, okay, now I'm going to split this class into groups and one group can talk about fireworks, one can talk about orbits and comets, and one uh, talks about math and physics. So you can you know, expand that to give some more interesting pieces as you go through. But that's the gist of what's in our simulations. I can go ahead and navigate back to our CK12 Sims page. And then our CK12 logo is really awesome because that will navigate me back to our homepage and I can kind of reset and start over again. And let's go ahead and instead of clicking on clicks from this explore menu, which is right here, I could also go ahead and click on it from here. Now our simulations are very clean, took a ton of graphic design work and everything to build them out. They're really systems-based as you go through. Our interactives are a little bit different. So there are little clicks interactives. Think of those as like little quick interactive components. So I can see all these different topic areas that I've kind of added here and I can pick a topic and I can go ahead and I can click on any one of these as you see what's happening. And these have a couple different components. They have a component where you have um, some sort of direction. So it says create a right triangle by moving the red point. So we wanna go ahead and get a right triangle. There we go. And that kind of allows students to play around with this. This one had a very simple set of directions. There's not anything super complicated there. And then questions that go with this. So what's the approximate distance? If I actually use the Pythagorean theorem and calculate it out, I'm just gonna randomly guess. You can see that we didn't get the correct answer, but I can see it. It's a learning opportunity for students right there. And these questions are gonna go from simple questions to more higher level thinking questions as you go through. And they usually end with a discussion question. So you'll see this last question right here is an open discussion. Great opportunity to start a class or end a class where students thinking about that. And some of them are even linked to our cafe where students can see what other students around the world have posted as answers or answer it themselves. And they can kind of jump into that piece. Looks like we may have a question. We just have a comment. Great, I'm glad you love the interactives. So there's some interactives built in. There's what our little simple clicks interactives our more kind of polished systems-based or molecular level viewpoints for our simulations, all sorts of options there. I'm gonna do the same thing again, go back to our Plix as a whole, and then go back one more time to our main CK12 page. And we're gonna look at adaptive practice, just because if you're not using a customized quiz, you don't have to build your own. You're more than welcome to use our adaptive practice. I usually recommend that you use it within one of our Flexbooks, because we took broad topics and limited kind of the initial questions for students to what makes the most sense. So for example, if you're solving an equation, well, that shows up in middle school all the way through, you know, solving pre-calculus equations as you're going through. So if I'm just looking at an algebra equation here, it's gonna have that breadth of questions within that topic. But if I look at it within the Flexbook that it's in, it's gonna be narrowed down to the ones that are more appropriate for sixth grade or an eighth grade level or a high school level or something like that. Um, so just keep that in mind. But let's show you what this practice looks like. So I can go ahead and let's talk about measurement systems and unit conversion. So here's an introduction. It opens. Because it's opening kind of outside the book, it's giving you some of those related resources. So here's your real world application, a plix, a video, a lesson that can go with it. A student is going to see these as well. So if they say, great, before I start practicing, I want to go ahead and I want to do this piece. But if we click start practicing here, 
for that view practice and previewing it from a Flexbook, all sorts of options. And you'll see here that I don't have a skill level yet. What metric unit would be best for measuring the distance? I can go ahead and click that. If I need a hint, I have an opportunity to get a hint there. We go here. This is basic introduction as we're going through. And then if I start just randomly guessing, it's going to give me a chance to try again from here. And if I guess again, we go from here, it's going to go ahead and move on to the next question. And at this point in time, you can see that my skill level is exploring. Oops because I've gotten a little bit right, but not quite. So not quite at the beginning level, but I definitely haven't mastered this concept. And that will fluctuate. That skill level helps you tell your completion goal out of 10, and then the skill level as you're working your way through. All sorts of options as you kind of kick that particular piece. So just go ahead and explore that. You as a teacher can kind of check it out. And then your report here, level of questions, your skill level, actual answers, all of that's available for anything you assign to students as well. You'll be able to see those pieces, whether that's directly here or if we close out of it and we look at it within a Flexbook. So I wanna, you don't have a ton of time left. I wanna show you kind of two other little pieces. So I did click assign. So if I went to Google Classroom and this would be the same in Canvas. If you assign within Canvas or you assign within uh, Schoology, um, you would be able to pull that up. If you use CK12 classes, you'd be able to pull up your assignment in CK12 classes. And you'll see here that I posted this sim at 229 because I am based out east. So it's not like I jumped ahead in time. I'm just out here. And you can kind of see this particular piece. And in the instructions, I would just click on this link to go ahead and open up my lesson. My students are going to get dropped directly into the lesson if they are um, accessing it from Google Classroom. As a teacher, I get kind of a second opportunity in here. And what that does is it's just linking my account. And in addition to previewing the assignment, I can actually open up that whole class report that Debbie was talking about. And I can see all of the CK12 class assignments that were made for this class. You can see here the skill level for the practice ones that they've done, or just check marks for the other kind of one-off complete or incomplete pieces. I can change this to their completion scores. And you'll see that on who's turned in their work or not turned in their work or quizzes how they did. But you can go ahead and explore that piece. Katie, mm -hmm. could you show them the ESL lesson so they can get an idea of what that looked yeah. like? I'd be happy to. So back to the OTAN page. I'm not going to go navigate all the way through, but you can kind of get there. And we can go ahead and open up that ESL lesson. First one, yeah, that one. Employment, that one, yes. Employment one. Happy to share that option. And you can see if we open up any of these chapters and lessons, it's going to drop you into a lesson. You're going to see some potential images. In this case, it looks like we have some vocabulary practice that has a built in interactive component to it. So it's just loading. There's a quizlet that she embedded there. Um, some actual inline questions from CK 12. So helmets got that one right. Let's say get that one wrong. And you can kind of see how things are playing out. So you can explore this and you can assign this the same way. So in this case, it looks like the core lesson is here, but there's not necessarily attached quiz or practice that's CK12, totally fine. In that case, we're just gonna give a complete or incomplete because we don't have practice to grade. Debbie, do you want me to explore more of that or? Nope, that was great. I just wanted to, is there anything else that you guys want to see? Because we just have a few more minutes and we want to spend it with the way you want it spent. While you're determining that on any book, whether it's our book or there, you can always add this to your library to bookmark it right here, or you can click customize and that will drop you into our customization tool. So go ahead and check those out. Um, and from here, you can see you can adjust the le chapter level or go ahead and edit the actual lesson itself, all sorts of options. If you're not editing at any given level, then it'll just point back to the resource that you pulled it from. And so if they make updates, you'll get to see those updates and benefit from them as well. So go ahead and explore those customization pieces. If not, I'm gonna point out three places that you can find help. So one is our help option here. That help option takes you to our help desk with a bunch of different articles. If you wanna go all in and be a certified educator, check out our certified educator program. That's a 10 hour professional development course. And then our webinars can be really helpful. It's 
best practice is to save your lesson before you leave. So that's why it's telling me you're going to lose the work that you did, but I don't need that book. So I'm good. And on this webinars page, you'll see that in a couple of hours, we're doing a webinar on our math content, specifically with our math team. And then you can see all of our archived recordings if you want to kind of play around with that. And then even below that is a link to our YouTube channel and some of those quick videos that Debbie was showing. So if you don't you know, need to find your way to our YouTube channel, you can just go to our webinars and then jump down there and you can see that full playlist. So you do not need Google Classroom, you do not need Canvas and you do not need Schoology. You can use the class functionality in CK12 right here and you can create your own classes and assign to those classes. And you'll see here in this class, I have a couple different demo classes here. So my fall 2021 class, same deal. I can see my students, I can add them in here, I can send them a code to join, um, and I can make all my assignments and see all my reports. We built that in so that you could still assign CK12 content if you didn't want to use an LMS separately. But if you use, if you do use one of those three, you don't need this functionality and then students don't need separate logins and it's just much cleaner. So user integration if it's available to you, but it is definitely not a requirement. Any other questions? Okay, well, I wanna give you how to contact us. Okay, so let me, I will share my screen. And last screen. All right, so contacting me, you can do it through SCOE, you can do it through OTAN, just contact OTAN, especially, especially if you find that this is something that you think your district is going to want to do, and you want more information, you want more training, you want more help, um, we'd be glad to do that. Um, you see Katie's information, and anytime you can contact partners at ck12.org. Um, there's other ways to contact her, but if you do partners, she knows it's adult ed. <laughs> so it's kind of like she she says, oh, I know what these people want. And so that's helpful to her. Um, we hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, we hope you get the word out. We're this is so exciting to me. I think I need a trumpet and I need to go and tell everyone. And uh, so we start small. So please tell others, tell them. This is here, it is free, it is great, it is growing. Um, the ability to customize, um, to add media and all of this, totally doable and, and you can do it. And so we want to be able to help you with that and make it so that the site grows, that adult education grows and that our students are blessed. <laughs>